Okay, I think we can start. So good afternoon, um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us in this uh, webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, we introduce ourselves. My name is Nicola Boccardi, and together with my colleague uh, Mattia Biolo, we'll guide you through this webinar about uh, hydraulic power recovery turbine. So I introduce myself. Since getting my master's degree in aerospace engineering in uh, 2014, I started to work for Training Pumps Italy in uh, La Spezia. I am a CFD analyst and hydraulic design engineer. My job consists in designing the hydraulic layout uh, using uh, CFD software in order to design new pumps and or uh, optimize uh, already existing one. So now I let Mattia introduce himself. Thank you, Nicola. So this is Mattia Biolo speaking. I work uh, as a R&D engineer within the hydraulic design group of Trillium Pumps Italy based in Milan. I started to work uh, here 10 years ago and uh, I hold a bachelor and master degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Padova. Thank you for attending. And uh, now I let Nicola go on with the first part of this webinar. Thank you, Mattia. So starting with a brief overview and a background, uh, Trillium Flow Technology is a global company that provides a broad spectrum of pump and valve solution to meet our customer needs. We support our customer with a global sales organization and have multiple manufacturing sites around the world. Uh, our goal in Trillium is to deliver a highly engineered products, be it performing uh, mission critical operation, backed by precision engineer service to support our customer every step on the way. So um, in uh, Trillium Flow Technology, as uh, we can see in the next slide, has a long uh, heritage of uh, innovation, uh, spanning over 190 years. Uh, the two pump brands being discussed uh, today, uh, Thermomechanica and Gabionetta, were respectively founded in 1912 and 1897, representing a wealth of experience and capability. Trillium is continually adding new products and service to make our customer process more efficient and productive. In 2021, as we can see in the top part of the slide, uh, we added red point valves to the Trillium family. And this year we are excited to welcome Thermomechanica Pompe to the Trillium Flow Technology family, uh, board, uh, furthering, uh, further broadening our capabilities to offer solution to our customers. So we see in, the, in this slide uh, shows a uh, different pump designation as defined by Hydraulic Institute uh, and uh, API standards. In the first line, we have uh, overhang pumps uh, designated OH1 through OH7. Uh, between bearing pumps uh, in the second line from BB1 to BB5. And in the last one, uh, vertically suspended pumps BS1 through BS7. So these are all just some of the products we are able um, to create in Trillium Flow technology. And uh, on the right of the right part of the slide, we see some uh, market we are involved in is uh, like uh, oil and gas, water and wastewater, power generation, just to mention a few of them. Um, okay, so we start uh, um, talking about what we, we will uh, introduce in this uh, webinar. So at the beginning, we will start uh, with an overview about the product itself. So about the hydraulic power recovery turbine. Uh, so what they are, uh, when it's um, uh, it's correct, and it can be helpful to consider using them, and why we need to use them uh, in, in, in in some plans. Uh, of course, we will compare uh, uh, the product with uh, uh, some uh, in some case with some turbine. So we will understand and try to explain. Um, why uh, there are advantages uh, uh, to use an HPRT instead of a real turbine, when to do it and when to prefer it, and the pros and cons of this choice. Uh, we will go on with um, uh, the, the selection, the correct selection of the HPRT, 
we will investigate uh, uh, how we do it in uh, in thermomechanica, gabionita, and uh, trillium flow technology, and uh, the theory behind it. So the some theoretical methods uh, uh, to to do that to predict the performance of a pump with uh, a pump working as a turbine. And uh, we'll talk about, uh, of course, uh, the, the use of computational fluid dynamic in it. Um, lately, uh, Mattia will discuss some case study examples. Uh, so some jobs we completed uh, in Trillium uh, that has a vast experience about it. So we have a lot of examples to, to show that. At the end of it, we have uh, time for sure for some uh, Q&A. So as, um, as I said, uh, uh, as it's, it's written in the chat, uh, uh, I ask you to submit your question in the Q&A box uh, during the presentation if uh, any question comes uh, to your mind, and we will answer that at the end of the presentation itself. Okay. Thank you. So we start with uh, the um, overview of the product. So power recovery uh, turbine are pumps that run in reverse. Uh, their goal is to recover energy from a process and improve the overall efficiency of the system. So using an HPRT allows the transformation of the residual pressure energy in the system into useful power. And this power can reduce the power absorbed by another process train, for example, in this case, the main pump, uh, by connecting the HPRT to the driver, so to the motor. In this kind of uh, application, this is just uh, an example of a skid uh, of a system with HPRT. In this case, the HPRT is connected to the driver, so to the motor, uh, by means of a clutch that engages the HPRT when it reaches the same rotational speed as the motor. So this is a main, um, a main scheme, and um, uh, it's a typical one. Uh, as uh, we said, the, the goal of the HPRT is to unload the, the motor driving the main pump. Uh, in, the next, uh, in the next slide, uh, we'll see why to use it. Um, as all the last reports suggest, the demand for uh, energy all around the world is fastly increasing. And uh, after falling by uh, about 1% in 2002, uh, 2020 due to the impact of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the global energy demand is set to grow by close 2.4% in the next years, driven by the global economy recovery. Uh, renewables are expanding, as we see on the graph on the right, um, uh, but not enough to satisfy a strong rebound in global electricity demand. So due to this uh, rising global demand for energy, many industries aim to reduce the ecological uh, footprint by minimizing energy consumption. And to achieve that, increasing plant efficiency turns out to be the goal to set uh, for themselves in the decades to come. So in order to do that, one feasible and cost-effective approach is the use uh, of an hydraulic power uh, recovery turbine, which allows you to recover the energy from an outlet pressurized flow. So uh, power recovery turbines are pumped that run in reverse, as we said, uh, and uh, the goal is to recover energy from a process and improve the overall system efficiency. An HPRT can be a single or multi-stage pump uh, and is used in a process when a fluid is pressurized and uh, uh, must be reduced uh, in pressure. So rather than throttle the fluid pressure through a pressure reducing valve and waste the, this store energy, uh, PRT can be used to drop the fluid pressure and drive a generator or drive the shaft on the process. So uh, here we see, for example, uh, this, in these two graphs, we see the same machine uh, working as a pump in the light blue line and working as a turbine in the red line. So on the left, we have the graph of the same machine work as a pump and as a turbine uh, related to the head, so the delta pressure. And on the right, we have uh, the efficiency curve uh, in a range of different uh, flow rate. Um, so we see why uh, many industry uh, can benefit the installation of uh, an HPRT in the next slide here. So uh, the most common areas of application are related to water supply system and processing industry, where a large amount of um, high pressure flow at the end of the cycle is available. So using the HPRT allows transformation of the residual pressure energy 
into the system into useful power which can res, um, reduce the power absorbed by another uh, process for example a pump by connecting it to the driver and here we see that the main uh, industry are related to the water so more, more both drinking water residual and wasted water and another important um, uh, industry is uh, the oil and gas with uh, for example the process of synthesis uh, of uh, amines in the next uh, slide, we see an, um, an example of a calculation of how much uh, it can be helpful in order to save money and uh, make more efficiency the, efficient the entire process. In this case, uh, we have uh, uh, an HPRT is being installed in a natural gas sweetening plant uh, to replace the pressure lead dime valve at the reaching main line to the regenerator. And the um, HPRT will be used to drive an electrical generator and the power will be fed to the plant electrical distribution system to supply power to local loads. In this case, the machine, in this case, the machine uh, uh, the, at its best efficiency points, so at the flow rate with the highest efficiency, at a volumetric flow rate of 500 gallons per minute, so around 113 cubic meter per hour. And the delta P was around uh, 1,000 psi, so almost uh, 7 megapascal. Uh, for an efficiency of 75% of the machine itself, the hydraulic power able to recover was 292 uh, horsepower, so around uh, 217 kilowatt. So here we have an example of, based on this hydraulic power recover inside the process, with uh, an average electric cost, uh, we take a this is a reference value in the US of uh, 0 $0.166 dollar per kilowatt hour. We would save something like $207,000 per year, which is really, really impressive. Okay. So uh, going on, we will see this um, the scheme uh, as we talked uh, previously. So one of the main applications is in the linamine process. Um, it's a process where uh, a crude gas goes into a contactor, uh, we see in the, in the red, uh, red square. Uh, at, so the, the crude gas is in a contactor at uh, very high pressure, uh, where amine is used to remove and absorb carbon dioxide or, and or hydrogen sulfide. And after the contactor, the gas is pressurized, uh, in the pressurized through a rich amine flow a uh, flow wall control valve and um, and then it's a uh, flash to another tank now the regenerated amine uh, um, uh, it's it's passing through this uh, flow control valve so if instead of using this uh, flow control valve we use an hydraulic turbine or uh, or an hprt in this case we can recover the energy from the rich amine fluid and transfer it to the motor that drives the main pump. So in this case, using an HPRT uh, as a turbine, we can unload the motor driving the main pump, or we can choose a smaller motor in order to have the same uh, working condition for the pump. Um, so going on, we have um, uh, a comparison between uh, an HPRT and the turbine. So we have to uh, discuss why to use uh, um, an hydraulic power recovery turbine instead of a, a real turbine. So the main reason is because pumps are uh, it's cost wise. It's uh, it's the main um, cost are the main reason for that. Uh, pumps are particularly suitable as turbines when the investment costs for conventional turbine are too high, making energy generation uneconomical. Being a serious product, uh, a pump causes significantly lower investment cost and thus compensates for the possibly lower efficient compared to a real turbine. So the use of pumps as turbine is convincing due to the significantly lower purchase cost where uh, each application should be critically analyzed on the basis of the achievable average annual output compared to the life cycle cost. So. Uh, and other other important uh, reason to choose uh, an HPRT instead of a turbine are, for example, the construction because the absence of a uh, flow control device uh, is an advantage since the pump construction uh, in this way is usually simpler. 
uh, or uh, the spare parts. Um, spare parts are readily available, and in in in, in this in this case, really, flow technology offers after sales service throughout the world, and uh, uh, it's easier than finding, for example, uh, often spare parts for uh, turbine. And uh, the maintenance is easier; no special equipment or uh, skills are required. And lastly, but uh, really important point. Um, in a, a conventional turbine cannot support uh, the API 610 construction. So when we are handling uh, flammable or toxic fluid, uh, we cannot use a conventional turbine, but uh, the HPRT for sure is the, is the best solution for that. Um, Oh, in the next slide, we talk about the use of HPRT instead of a turbine, uh, which can lead to a significant reduction in capital cost of the plant. And sometimes it can be the order of 10 to 1 or uh, even more. Now, this um, is, uh, is true when the, uh, the HPRT is correctly selected. So you need to have the right product for your uh, special needs, for the right plant, for uh, the right uh, working condition. And to do that, you need to find um, uh, you know, the, the correct manufacturers. And this uh, trillion flow technology is uh, one of the leaders of the market in that. And uh, you need to choose, as I said, the right product in order to make it economically valuable. Um, the investment costs for uh, hydro turbines are, are, as we already said, pretty high. And the payback period can be around 15 years and HPRT if correctly selected can be reduced to two or three years. Uh, in the next uh, slide, we see an example of that. So this is an independent study. And so we, we can, you can see the source uh, on the bottom. And um, uh, this is a small case, so a case with a small uh, capacity in terms of uh, the power absorbed by the machine, just three kilowatt. Um, but it's interesting because the, the turbine has, of course, an overall efficiency higher, and the life usually is higher in the turbine. But the important part is the both initial cost, that is 12%, the cost of the turbine, which is make it, make it in this case really valuable uh, to choose an HPRT economically. And for sure, this um, uh, will um, uh, we'll see the same uh, phenomenon for the annual expenses for the annual life uh, cycle cost. And of course, at the end of the process, the cost of electricity generation, which is uh, one of the main important parameters for uh, evaluating uh, the, the correct machine to choose is almost around 20% of the cost of electricity generation for the turbine. Um, going forward, uh, we can we can see uh, Based on what we said, we have to select uh, uh, all these data are, uh, as I mentioned, are related to a machine that is correctly selected. So uh, in order to select a correct machine, we need to pass from the performance of a pump to a turbine. So we have the pump. We don't know how the turbine works. We want to predict the performance. So many investigations have been performed over the time to predict the performance of the pumps uh, working as turbines. Uh, this was due mainly because of the high cost of the experimental investigation, and the focus was set to elaborate some theoretical methods to predict the HPRT performance from the pump. So here we have um, uh, some of the most commonly uh, used semi-empirical formulas, and they discovered as well. Um, of course, um, uh, all these um, the performance of the pump in this method are all uh, extrapolated uh, from pump test at their best efficiency point. So uh, the best efficiency point is the uh, operating condition where the machine reaches its uh, maximum efficiency. Uh, the problem, as we can see, for example, pretty clearly in the second column is the scattering value we have already in the formula. So um, having 7%, uh, for example, in the estimation of the best efficiency point, 14 in the head, so in the delta pressure. So all this formula um, uh, doesn't have enough accuracy in the prediction of the performance. And this will take to make a, a machine, in many cases, uh, with uh, some dummy stage, uh, which it makes the machine more um, uh, increase the cost and the weight of the machine itself. So um, 
as we can see in the next slide, uh, these formulas are not working properly or not enough, not enough to avoid the, the, the presence of this uh, dummy stage at the end. And uh, here we have a typical example. It's a machine we, we tested. So the, the, the correct value we're supposed to expect is to find the, the experimental test is the red, red cross. And all these methods uh, are, um, uh, are not predicting enough well the performance, in both in terms of the position of best efficiency point, uh, in terms of head, in terms of delta pressure, and neither the efficiency uh, as well. Some of them are underestimated, some are overestimated. Sometimes one is closer than another. So we understand that we cannot use this one uh, all the time to uh, predict the, the performance of the pump working as a turbine. So in order to help us in the prediction process, uh, computational fluid dynamic tools can be extremely useful. Um, uh, since the, the availability of relatively inexpensive computer with high computing powers has fostered the development of numerical methods, which are able to solve a three-dimensional Navier-Stokes equation in complex components with reasonable effort. So numerical methods are used uh, also in the pump industry with the object of optimizing the hydraulic components to increase the reliability of performance prediction and in this way to reduce the testing cost. So uh, CFD can be an extremely helpful uh, tool in order to predict this, uh, this, uh, the performance of a pump working as a, as a turbine. And we see an example of, um, of uh, CFD in this, uh, in this slide. We see on the right, uh, we have a, um, a pump uh, recreated uh, in, uh, on computer. So using uh, computational fluid dynamic software, we see the, the, free, uh, the, free stage, uh, the, the free stage of the machine with impellers, diffuser, and a return channel. Uh, this is a BB4 machine. And, um, uh, we see uh, how we uh, divided the domain into a multiple uh, multitude of the small cells. Uh, and we see in the next part of the slide here, exactly. And we can see in this section how we divided the entire domain in a lot of small cells and nodes. And uh, based on the software we are using, we are calculated uh, in these nodes or cell, the, uh, the fluid dynamic, uh, the partial differential equation. In this way, we can predict the performance uh, of the machine, both working as a pump and as a turbine. So, in the next uh, in the next slide, we see how we use that uh, this uh, 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 this instrument. So, you, mainly we have two different kind of projects. We start with the bottom one, the hydraulic design already tested. Um, so this this process is when we already tested the machine both as a pump and as a turbine, and uh, having both the, the test for both modes. Um, uh, in case we have the machine, for example, we have to increase the number of stages, or we want to scaling uh, the machine bigger, we can use scaling formula and affinity laws, and uh, we can predict the performance of having already the test for the turbine. In case we have the performance just of the pump, we go in the new hydraulic design, so the upper part. And in this way, uh, we have to use both the prototype test, which always has to be performed. Because, and uh, But together with that, we will use CFD analysis. And the combination of that will help us making uh, the, the prediction of the performance uh, of the machine. So. Uh, through this process, we are able to to predict better the performance of the, the machine itself, working as a turbine too. And in the next slide, uh, we can see an example of that. So we have a free stage BB4 pump. Uh, the specific uh, speed is close to 20, so an NS around 1000. And uh, here we perform in the, this machine, both CFD analysis on the pump and on the turbine, and then experimental test on the pump and on the turbine. So why we do both of them? Because um, we need to set up the, the CFD correctly. And this is an important part of the, of the process. 
Uh, CFD is a really, really useful uh, instrument and tool. Uh, it helps you to predict uh, really well the performance, but just if you know already the setting that you have to use. So the main point of the CFD is that you need to have a lot of experience, uh, um, of course, as a user, but especially as a company. Uh, you need to have um, uh, the correct know-how and know how to deal with that. And um, the settings have to change based on the fluid you're using, uh, on the kind of machine, uh, on the, the number of states, the entire machine configuration. So it's, it's really important that part to understand uh, that uh, CFD has to be performed from, um, has to be used uh, in the correct way. And the entire selection uh, process has to be done from uh, a company that uh, have uh, a lot of experience uh, in that. So uh, comparing that and having the correct setting for uh, the CFD, you can uh, perform CFD analysis and select the correct machine for uh, uh, the customer needs. Uh, going forward for with um, with uh, the next slide, we see where we perform this um, uh, this uh, this test. So we have our uh, test center in uh, in La Spezia. Here, here we show the one in La Spezia. We have other uh, around the globe, and um, uh, in this one we have uh, we we are able to test a uh, um, machine to till the capacity of uh, sixty five thousand cubic meter per hour, so around uh, 286,000 uh, gallon per minute. And the maximum test power is around 15 megawatt of, uh, of power inside the machine. So uh, that's we can test so many different kind of machine in uh, our test center and uh, different kind, of course, as we saw uh, between bearings, uh, vertical, uh, overhang, so all the different kinds. Uh, here, in the next one, we see an example of it. So we have uh, an example of um, the, the same uh, machine we, we saw before. It's a BB4 machine. And uh, this is the free stage uh, pump. And we tested both, as I said, as a pump in this way and uh, as a, um, an hydraulic uh, power recovery turbine. And uh, we see, we'll see now the conceptual test uh, loop here. So the same machine is um, is uh, the HPRT uh, that we see here. Uh, this is connected through a dual shaft motor to the drive pump, and uh, on um, on the both of the shaft we installed two torque meter. Those torque meter allow us to uh, predict the power. Uh, absorbed by the, the pump and the one from the HPRT. Um, the performance there, the operating um, range of the HPRT can be uh, can be changed uh, using or the, the two valve that we see here, discharge valve between HPRT and drive pump and the suction valve between HPRT and the tank or changing the um, uh, rotational speed of the, of the motor. Uh, we will see on the flow meter the value of the flow rate uh, we are testing at the moment. So thanks to this uh, 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 slide, and now we pass to this one that is um, uh, an example of uh, the results we obtained from the CFD. Um, so here we have uh, uh, the color is uh, referred to the pressure we have, and this is the um, uh, um, CFD analysis on the pump mode. So it's uh, the same machine, but working as a pump. And uh, we see here the impeller, so the rotating component. And uh, uh, watching the, um, uh, the vectors, uh, um, the velocity vectors of the fluid, we see how the fluid is flowing from the impeller, the rotating component in the clockwise direction, inside the uh, diffuser. And in the next slide, we see how this is uh, turning into uh, the same mode. Again, it's the same um, uh, pump mode uh, CFD analysis. And uh, we notice that we are in the pump mode because, again, the, the impeller is rotating clockwise and the fluid from the vectors we see, they are flowing from the suction chamber inside the impeller. Uh, the same simulation has been performed in the uh, turbine mode. So, again, the, the, the rotating component is the, uh, is the impeller, but in this, time, this time is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. 
and we notice that the vector are flowing from the uh, from the uh, diffuser inside the impeller itself and this is the turbine mode uh, now we have uh, uh, this, the, the same um, phenomenon we see in this slide as um, the impeller is rotating again in the uh, anti-clockwise direction and now the fluid opposite as we saw in the pump uh, is, flow is flowing from the impeller inside the suction chamber so uh, everything is connected as we see so uh, this was the safety analysis and um, uh, so I hope the, you enjoyed this uh, first part of the webinar and the presentation. And now we go on with the second part where Mattia will explain some uh, case study examples of what we um, uh, we did in uh, in uh, trillium pumps uh, uh, and trillium flow technologies. And so uh, uh, for now on, I hand over uh, the floor uh, to Mattia. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, so here we are with the second part of this webinar dedicated to show you a, a couple of uh, past projects executed by Trillium Pumps Italy. Trillium Pumps Italy has uh, an extensive experience on this kind of uh, uh, complete package of the unit. Uh, for example, because for example, the first installation are dated 1990. So, uh, Within them, we can find the example where both the main pump and the HPRT are uh, BB2 type pumps. And so according to API designation, they are uh, horizontal, radially split one stage uh, between bearing pumps, or both are uh, BB3. And so multi-stage pumps uh, with axial split casing, or both are uh, BB5, so always multi-stage pumps, but uh, with uh, radially split casing. In other cases, we have also the possibility to have the main pump that is uh, BB2 to stage, for example, while the HPRT is uh, NOH2, and so a single stage overhang pump. This is uh, the first case uh, study and is uh, made uh, of, uh, of, the, of this last type uh, of machine. Uh, the application here is uh, for the amine process that, uh, as my colleague said before, is, uh, it is one of the most common within the oil and gas field. And uh, so in this slide, we can see the typical uh, skid configuration of these, uh, of these uh, pumps. And uh, we, have, uh, we have the electric motor in the center with the double-ended shaft, uh, so coupled to the left to the main pump and to the right to the HPRT via the clutch. Uh, the clutch is uh, the mechanical device that uh, allows the, the HPRT to rotate freely. Because, for example, uh, sometimes uh, the, the fluid uh, uh, is not available on site or, or, or the capacity or its pressure is not enough uh, to, to allow the HPRT uh, to reach the, the nominal speed of the electric motor. Uh, I have a note on this configuration about uh, maintenance, so I ask you to, to remember it because we will see the difference uh, with the second study where the, the maintenance on the main pump may be more complex. Uh, just a few words on the operating condition. We have uh, an, uh, an, here an, el an electric motor of uh, 640 kilowatt, and uh, instead the output power of the hydraulic power recovery turbine is uh, 171 kilowatt. The capacity through the, the HPRT is 355 cubic meter per hour, while the head across it is 220 
five kilowatt. So uh, the, pre the preliminary pump selection for the operation as turbine is done with one of the of the theoretical method mentioned before by Nicola, my colleague. In particular, uh, this time we have used the Yavia methods uh, for the BAP transformation from turbine to pump. Uh, it consists in few in few steps. The first one is uh, to calculate the specific speed of the turbine. And then with it, uh, uh, you can enter a, a graph that uh, sum up some experimental data. And uh, in this graph, you can uh, evaluate the, 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 the flow coefficient that relates the capacity as pump to the, to the capacity as turbine. Then uh, with the, these two values, uh, you can enter a second graph that uh, relates the, the, the head as pump to the head as turbine. So uh, if we add a look at all uh, the other method, we will see that uh, uh, there is uh, quite a wide range of, uh, of uncertainty on predicting uh, the, the performance of the pump as turbine, as uh, also Nicola underlined in the first part. And so it is clear the need for uh, a tool in order to to have more accuracy on, predict on the prediction of the pump performance as turbine. And this is why we here in 3 Pump Pumps Italy, we have uh, developed the use of CFD analysis. So also in this, ca also in this case, we have run some CFD analysis. And uh, firstly, you need uh, to have uh, a 3D modeling of the internals of the pump. So on the left uh, here, we can see the, the subdivision of the, uh, of the pump in, 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 in all the fluid domains. We have the, the volute, the impeller, the suction or discharge conduit, uh, depending on the mode of operation of the, as pump or as turbine. And we, we see also the, the leakage. And so the, 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 model, the, the modeling of the, the wear rings because it is important to, to take into account also the volumetric efficiency of the pump. And for, uh, for them, uh, we have uh, exploited here the rotational periodicity of this geometry. Uh, then you need uh, to discretize all these domains in order to solve the famous Navier-Stokes Navier equation numerically. Uh, of course, uh, to obtain all this grid, we use uh, the ANSYS uh, package uh, of softwares. And uh, in this case, we, we have exhydral mesh for the leakages in order to limit uh, the number of cells required uh, for the discretization of the diametral clearances, which are uh, very small, the, the gaps are small. Um, but we can have also tetrahedral mesh and uh, we use it here for the volute, the impeller and the, the suction or discharge. Um, for the impeller, uh, we can use also exa mesh from turbo grid, but in, in this case, due to the presence of the, of the balance oils, uh, which gives a complex geometry, we use the tetrahedrons. Okay, so in this slide, uh, we can see the CFD results, both uh, as pump and uh, as the turbine. Um, on the picture uh, on the left, we can see uh, the, the functioning as a pump, and it is easily uh, understandable by the, the, the first figure here because the, 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 the streamline, the suction are straight forward. While um, in the same region, on the second picture uh, on the right, uh, we see the, that the, the, the fluid is rotating because now it is the, the outlet of the turbine. 
Uh, on the graph here, we can see that uh, in this case, uh, using a CFD analysis was uh, really essential in order to have a good design. In fact, uh, the, the original pump design gives the, the, the blue curve for head and flow, the blue curve with triangles, uh, that is outside the acceptability region of the of required for this uh, application and the acceptability reason is for plus or minus five percent of the flow rate considering a fixed uh, head and so here we, we were uh, able to modify the design in particular we have reduced the throat area of the volute in order to to target the the right performance uh, in the same graph, we can see also the very, the very good uh, agreement between the test results and uh, the CFD data. Uh, the test results are represented here with the gray, the green lines, both uh, as a turbine and uh, as pump on the on the left uh, graph. So. Uh, this is the, the test uh, arrangement uh, that uh, we used in order to, to assess the performance of the HPRT. We can see the, the main pump on the right, and uh, we installed the T-connection discharge pipe on the green discharge piping with a control valve that uh, uh, extract some of the pressurized flow in order to, to feed the, the pump as turbine, which is on the left. And in the center, we have the electric motor and uh, the clutch is hidden here with the, from the yellow uh, personal protection. This test was uh, carried out in our uh, uh, facility of Nova Milanese, one of the two plants of Trillium Pumps Italy. Uh, built up recently in uh, 2016, and inside it uh, we have uh, a state-of-the-art uh, test room. Uh, we can say that it is uh, really the state-of-the-art because uh, it is fully automated. Uh, we can test uh, up to five pumps running at the same time on 13 uh, test benches with the quick changeability of pump installation. I put here also some uh, numbers about uh, the test room. Uh, we can test uh, horizontal and vertical pumps uh, with capacity up to 12,000 cubic meter per hour with a high level of pressure for the both vertical and uh, horizontal configuration. Uh, we have a shop motor available up to four megawatt while the max uh, the maximum electrical power available is of 8 megawatt and so uh, we can test all our uh, uh, machinery uh, operating as pump or as a turbine let's uh, now do some rough calculation at rate condition uh, of this case study and we will see that uh, the main pump absorbed power is 541 kilowatt in this case. While if we consider a motor, a typical motor efficiency of 96%, we, we can calculate that the electric motor absorbed power is 563 kilowatt. But if we consider that the HPRT has an output power of 171 kilowatt. Uh, and considering the mechanical uh, efficiency of, of 98% of the clutch, we, we can calculate that the actual uh, motor absorbed power is of uh, um, 396 kilowatt. And so, uh, what uh, we can discover is that uh, we can save a really huge amount of, uh, of, kilowatt, of kilowatt hour because uh, the, the, the pump operation is continuous. And uh, if we consider the electricity cost, uh, the average, which is the average, 
world uh, price uh, of uh, $0.144 per uh, kilowatt hour. We can see that the, the cost for uh, one main pump operation uh, is of $200,000 per year. So uh, really impressive. Let's move to the, to the second case study that I want to submit, submit you. And uh, we are still in the uh, amine process, but uh, different type of uh, pumps. Here we have uh, BB5 pumps, both for the main pump and the HPRT. And so they are multi-stage uh, double casing uh, between bearing pumps. Um, and here we have the, the second, uh, a second, another type of uh, skid configuration. It was uh, a request from the client to have the main pump in the center instead, for, instead of the electric motor. And um, maybe uh, we can see that uh, the maintenance for this configuration, doing maintenance of the main pump may be a little more complex because uh, uh, you may need to disassemble the electric motor or the clutch in order to, to, to do maintenance on the main pump. So uh, here uh, we have customized the, the shaft of the pump to be double-ended uh, and, uh, and to couple the main pump to the right to the electric motor and to the left to the HPRT via the clutch. Uh, here, the, the operating condition, uh, we, we see that uh, the, the level of the pressure here is higher, but the output power is a little bit less, uh, 89 kilowatt, because also the capacity is less. Um, here we use the carbon steel for the barrel uh, as materials and uh, the internals of the pump was made of stainless steel, which is the typical uh, material for the aluminium. Also in this case, we have used the, the theoretical method to do the first uh, selection of the pump. And we can see the performance curve in black here. Uh, but uh, also in this case, we, we needed to, to go for some CFD analysis because the, the, in order to assess the, the actual performance of the pump as turbine. And so we, we used the first uh, a two stage uh, a two stage model that uh, helps us to optimize the, the throat area of the diffuser and uh, helps us uh, to, to, to define the impeller diameter. And uh, for example, here we have done also some kind of rounding on what it is usually the trailing edge of the impeller blades. Uh, on the graph, uh, we can see that uh, uh, we have a good agreement between the, uh, the CFD analysis and the test result, so the, the violet curve and the blue curve, especially for the flow and the head curve. Uh, in, the, in the second time, we have also uh, performed the, the complete pump uh, 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 simulation, and uh, uh, we can see here an image of the streamlines. And uh, on the left corner of the bottom of this slide, we can see the, the test uh, arrangement also for this case study. And we have here the shock motor, then the main pump with uh, the, the, the T connection on the discharge pipe. Uh, which is difficult to see here, but uh, it, it is there. And there is also the control valve to, um, to test the different uh, flow uh, through the, the HPRT. I put here also an image of the site installation of this uh, train, of this complete train. So again, doing some calculation, some simplified uh, life cycle cost calculation, 
we can see that uh, the the actual absorbed uh, power of the motor uh, is uh, 276 kilowatt instead of 363 kilowatt always considering the typical efficiency of the uh, of the of the electric motor of the end of the clutch so also in this case we can see the the impressive savings that uh, of one hundred of thousand dollars per year and it is uh, uh, really why uh, HPR, uh, HPRT is useful and uh, for all the, the application that we have seen. So uh, we arrived at the end of this webinar and uh, we can say that in this presentation, we have underlined the state of the art inside Tridium Pumps Italy about uh, hydraulic power recovery turbine. We have uh, introduced them as a product. We described uh, in which industry and plants HPRT can be useful and uh, cost effective. We, uh, we showed uh, the most common theoretical uh, and, and empirical formulas to estimate uh, their performance. Uh, and we have seen how uh, here in Trillium Pumps Italy, we have developed uh, uh, the use of CFD tools in order to, to, to predict the, the performance of our pumps as turbine uh, in a more accurate way. I think that now is time to, to have uh, some uh, questions and to answer to them. So I give back uh, the floor to Nicola to see if there are any questions. And um, thank you for your attention. And uh, um, please feel free to contact us also at the end of this webinar. So Nicola, have we some, any questions? Okay, see, thank you, Mattia. Well, um, thank you for, we have many questions and uh, unfortunately we cannot answer all of them. Um, as Matthias said, these are uh, the main uh, uh, reference. Please uh, uh, check this uh, uh, email for any information or uh, for any doubts uh, you have. Uh, um, uh, so you can check uh, this email or of course the, um, the website tridiumflow.com. Uh, so we start with uh, a question I think is referring to uh, the question is that does the quoted payback period of uh, an HPRT 15 years consider the additional energy infrastructure required to make the, ener the generated energy usable on site? I think is referring to, uh, to slide 19. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's the part I, I introduced. Uh, yes, the the um, the slide we we showed, um, yes, this one and the next one especially are both related to this uh, source. So the idea is that this is an independent study, and uh, uh, we wanted to compare this uh, study with the data we have from uh, uh, our uh, uh, our work. I found this um, uh, this source, this study that you see here, and. Uh, uh, the all the costs uh, that you, you see uh, here are all in percentage. Of course, they uh, are taking into consideration the overall efficiency of the machine. So, um, the cost here referring to a machine that has uh, a turbine of eighty percent efficiency, uh, while the HPRT the cost is considering the fact that the machine has sixty percent efficiency. The fifteen years that is in the previous slide is from this study, so it's like a, a, it's a data value extrapolated from this uh, author, and it just was a, a way to give you uh, to give you like a, a reference as a time comparing, uh, for example, to these two three years that we have uh, when we select correctly the machine. This is uh, a, a really important part that we have. Uh, it's really important that when we select the, um, uh, the machine to, to become an HPRT, we select the correct one 
So it's important uh, the, the manufacturers know what is doing, so which machine it has, and what which are the performance. I hope uh, it solved your um, uh, your question. Uh, there is uh, another one uh, which CAD package you use and which model of ANSYS. Uh, we use different kind of uh, package. We cannot go too much in, in the deep, but both commercial and not here. Uh, I think uh, for sure ANSYS is one of them, mm, for sure. Uh, I think, Mattia, you use the same. Yes. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. We use many, many of them, of course. Uh, just the, the important part is that you need to know how to use it. So as I already mentioned during the presentation, it's really important to know the setting. Of course, different program has different way to, to set uh, in the proper way, depending on the machine, the fluid, everything. So, yeah, you, uh, we, we usually use CFX for turbo mm -hmm. machinery. Say for this case, it was um, you use this one. Um, uh, 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 the, um, the performance uh, uh, tolerance that we have uh, in the uh, which standard is used for defining performance tolerance, or in other words, performance test criteria. Uh, for, for sure, the, the performance. Uh, uh, tolerance depends on the instruments and the instruments you're going to use in the test depending on the flow rate and on the um, uh, seemingly on the flow rate. I think for flow meter, for example, or the pressure transmitter has another one, of course, but uh, in, they are really precise right now. I mean, we don't have a, a really big scatter on the, on the instrument when we perform tests because uh, then we make different kind of uh, many points in the to, to have a wide range of uh, of performance and to have a correct score both in terms of head and efficiency yeah the the api uh, 610 uh, yeah. uh, suggests to use uh, plus or minus uh, five percent for the flow for the requested flow at uh, fixed uh, head during the test but and it is what uh, we usually use uh, as tolerance uh, as a, a acceptability range of the pump performance as turbine mm -hmm. See. i showed uh, uh, it uh, yeah. in the, the two case studies okay see yeah. uh, another one we have uh, uh, this one, once the HPRT comes up to speed, does the electrical power to the motor get turned off? Um, as we as we saw in the in the slide, the main goal of the um, uh, of the uh, of the HPRT is to unload the motor. So um, the HPRT getting the energy from the pressure fluid at the end of the process. It allows you to unload the motor so it can work with uh, uh, less power. Yeah, uh, usually you you cannot uh, turn off the motor, but the HPRT helps the motor partially. So the the absorbed power by the motor uh, is uh, lower because exactly. when the when the HPRT is operating. Uh, okay, let's do another one. I'm sorry, we have so many, really all really interesting, but we are uh, finishing our um, uh, the time we have. So we have uh, this one. Uh, do you have any simulation video or animation video to understand how the HPRT operates? I think we have our, uh, the, um, we can go to the slide, I, the last slide uh, we have. So I think this one, it's it's the, the main uh, it's the one that uh, is the video we have um, we put here of course uh, and this one uh, we see uh, I think is the one that clarify better the the question you ask in this case you see that the um, uh, the rotating component so the impeller rotating in the middle. Uh, in this case it's going anti clockwise and the fluid is going from the diffuser. So you see all these channels that have more pressure. So the pressure here is around uh, 
is uh, around uh, uh, it's yellow here 4.5 uh, uh, per uh, 10 at uh, 6 uh, pascal and here we see that is flowing from the diffuser inside the impeller so this is the turbine mode because if we go choose light back exactly the same machine with the impeller rotating in the clockwise direction the fluid is flowing from the um, uh, from the impeller through the diffuser so uh, as we as we said the um, the machine uh, in, uh, in in one sense in one rotational sense is works as a pump in the opposite one works uh, as a as a turbine and uh, this is like the the way it works and uh, see once again i thank you for all these um, all these questions uh, we finish our time uh, of course, as uh, Matthias showed in the last slide, please refer to um, the, the email we see uh, at the end and uh, at the trillionflow.com uh, for any additional uh, information about the HPRT. We are 100% available to clarify any of your doubts or help, or help with uh, anything or any doubts you can have here info at trillionflow.com. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Bye. Bye.